Hey everyone, my name is Melissa and welcome back to another Langflow video. If you're interested in working with vision models, LLMs, AI agents, vector databases, and even vibe coding front end tools, then you've come to the right video. I'm currently building a clothing recommendation app and I wanted to show you how we can combine all of those ideas together and use it all for this app that we're building. So let's get started. So first, let's take you through the prototype of what we've built so far. So this is what I've called for now Fashion Buddy. And there's two flows that we can go through. You can upload an image or you can describe an item with text. So firstly, going through the image flow, this is where we're going to use vision models and we'll dive into that in just a little bit. I'm going to upload an image here. For example, this image right here. And say you saw this as you're scrolling on Instagram or maybe you found it in a magazine or something and you're wondering where can I get certain pieces of the uh, of the image that we're looking at. Um, what's happening in the background is we're using vision models to interpret the items of apparel that it sees in the images. And it's doing a vector search into a database that has a data set of clothing and it's going to return back some suggestions. So we'll see that here in just a second. All right, so your personalized fashion suggestions are ready. And you see in the image, we have a blazer, we have some jeans, a white shirt, um, and a handbag. So it's recommended us some blazers from the data set and other kind of similar items that matches the essence of the outfit. So uh, this is the first flow where you can upload the image. The second flow is more of an enhanced search engine that's tailored specifically for fashion. Um, and this is because this is how we're prompting the AI agent in the back end. Again, we'll get to that soon. So for example, I can say, I am looking for New Balance uh, 530 size eight women's get suggestions. And it's going to search the internet using Tavily, which is an AI search engine. And it's going to extract the results and give that back to us. And this is just a very uh, tailored version of what you would usually do if you're doing something like a Google search. And here it's showing us some options with clickable links. So I can go into these links here. We see the 530 athletic shoes. Um, and I'll go to this one as well. Yeah, cool, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And does it have size eight women's? Yes, it does. And you can go ahead and start shopping. So this is what we are trying to get to, or of course we're gonna improve on this a little bit in the future. But what's happening in the back end? How are we using vision models? How are we using vector search? What's actually happening? We're doing this all in Langflow. And Langflow is the main orchestration of what's happening here. It's handling both the flows of the upload image flow and the text description flow. So we're gonna hop into two different flows today that kind of shows you uh, what's happening in the back end. So first things first, Langflow is our AI app development platform. It's a visual first platform, but not visual only. All of the things that you're seeing here uh, are called components. And behind these components, they have actual code as you see here. So the flow itself is going to end up looking something like this, at least for the image flow. Uh, when the user, we'll start over here to the right, when the user uploads a photo to the application, the image is going to be sent to a vision model. The vision model, what it does is that it accepts the image and then it converts this image into a textual description based on what you've prompted the model to essentially look for. So this is where a little bit of prompt engineering comes in. Um, so if I told the vision model, for example, um, only pay attention to the clothing items that you see in this image um, and ignore anything in the background, then that's what I should expect it to do. Otherwise, if you say describe this image and it sees maybe a tree or a building, it's going to describe the building, the tree, and that kind of um, messes up the search that we're trying to do. We're only focusing on the clothing. So we're going to be getting that description from the model. And then we're going to use an embedding model to um, embed the textual description, store that, uh, do a vector search into what's called the vector database. And in our vector database, we're using AstroDB. So here we have a static data set that we've already preloaded. Um, we got this online from Kaggle. It just uses some images and um, clothing listings from Zara, which is like a popular uh, clothing store. And we've already taken both the images of the Zara data set and the product names and we vectorize those. So when we do a search with the uh, response that we get from the vision model to 
the after database, then we should also get similar items back to this. So for example, um, we can look at some of our products here. We have wax denim overshirt and you can click search and you'll see how the results kind of change a little. So now we have wax denim shirt. That might be the same thing, actually. Um, we have denim jacket, another denim shirt, another denim shirt. Um, and it's doing that by uh, ordering it by how similar it is to the wax denim overshirt. You can do this with any of them. So I'm looking for maybe now faded leather effect jacket. Let's do a search on that. And then now we see more with jacket, faux leather jacket, technical jacket. So you kind of get the idea here what's what's happening. So now once we get the response back from the vision model, we embed that. We do a vector search back into our database to receive back the similar items and re-return those results. So how do we build this in Langflow? We are using this chat input to basically receive the user um, the user query. And then it's getting sent to Anthropic, as you saw from the diagram. So Anthropic, I've prompted it to only identify pieces of clothing in the picture and describe the pieces in great detail. Be descriptive as possible. And like I mentioned earlier, I said if there's a model wearing the clothing, ignore them. If there's anything in the background, ignore that as well. Only focus on the clothing. So it's kind of a simple prompt. You can definitely go into greater detail, ignoring other things, being uh, more descriptive. It's all in how you engineer your prompt. So after I've generated that message or the resp that response from the vision model, you can inspect the response from the vision model here too, actually. So um, tops, plain white t-shirt with crew A-line, outerwear, medium blue wash denim. So this was actually from a different query that we did, but you see how it's able to categorize and kind of describe each of the items here. And we send that response, if you follow this, to our Astro database. And the Astro database, as you saw, it performs a vector search. So using that uh, text description, it does a vector, it does a similarity search back to the data that we've, um, have already preloaded in our vector database. And we get those responses back as text. So we get something like this. And it gives us everything that we are looking for, essentially, which is the name of the product, the link to the product, a description, and the image to display back into the app for the user. And then in this prompt here, it's just saying you are a personal fashion assistant. Giving the context above, which are the search results, give your best recommendations to the user. It passes that to an LLM. Here we're using OpenAI, and, and then it gives it back to the user as chat input, uh, chat output. And that is the essentially the first flow that we saw where we upload an image. We can test it out here in the playground. So let's use that same image as earlier. I'm gonna go into my photos. Here is that outfit and we'll click send here. All right, so again, what's happening is that it's going through that same process that we just walked through, right? It's taking the image, it's describing it using the vision model. So any vision model of your choice, uh, I, like I said, I'm using Anthropic, but there's many other vision models out there to use, OpenAI's, Google, Gemini, um, and it's taking that description, doing a vector search back into AstroDB and giving us those responses. So now you see here, we got the same responses that we saw in the front end. Awesome. Now, how do AI agents and other tools come into play here? So when we talk about the text description uh, piece of the app where it's searching the internet, we are using an agent to handle multiple tools to be able to perform those searches. And the tools that we are using here are Tavoli AI Search, which is an AI enhanced search engine, and Agent QL to then extract web data from the results that we get back from Tabuli and return those back to the user using the agent. So um, now in this case, our input query is just text, but it's going to this agent and the agent is then using the tools at its disposal. So it's doing this kind of sequential task where it's saying, okay, first I need to use Tavoli to search the internet and actually find what the user is looking for. Then I need to use the agent QL tool to extract that data and then use the LLM again, in this case, OpenAI GPT 4.0 um, to then produce the response for the user. So let's test this out in the playground. I'm gonna say, uh, let's change up the request this time. I am looking for a, a springtime picnic dress with floral print on it. Keep it casual, fun, and cute. 
So now let's see what the agent's doing. It's using the fetch content tool that Tavli AI has. It's executed that. And I can actually drop down and see what's happening. And here is the information that it took from, uh, that Tavli AI responded with. And then it's using build output, which is the agent QL tool to then scrape that information and build the output with the expected metadata that we need, which might be the link to the website, the product name, the, the, the pricing of the product, etc. Things that you would see when you are also doing your own online shopping. So let's see the response that we get here. Okay, so we have this stripe maxi dress floral. It gives you the link, um, just as what we saw in the prototype, right? And we've got some floral dresses. These aren't maxi, but oh, there they are. Okay, so we have some floral dresses. These are very beautiful. Um, let's see another link, make sure everything is working just fine. There we go, some more floral dresses that you could wear to a picnic just as I asked in my query. So that's what's going on in the background of the prototype and how did we do this? How did we even bring this flow into the front end? And this is where vibe coding comes in. So I'm currently playing around with cursor and cursor is super fun to use because I'm sitting here actually having uh, conversations with my um, agent here in my cursor IDE. So once you're done building a flow like this and I've tested it out in the playground, what's great is that I can then publish this and click API access. And essentially I can just use this curl command or point it to the uh, lang flow instance that I'm using and then have my front end point to this flow. And that's essentially what's going on here with uh, the app that I showed earlier, right? We basically vibe coded this front end with cursor. It only really consists of two main flows again, which is my image upload flow and my text input flow. So in the image upload flow, so we have a lot of kind of UI stylistic things here, but if we scroll down to where the form is being submitted, um, the form is being submitted and then it calls this call fashion buddy images function, which is in this API class right here. And this handles basically the that curl request that you saw, the API request that points to the Langflow server that has my Langflow flow built. So I'm just passing what um, I need from the front end, which is the image from the user or the text from the user, because the same thing is happening here with call fashion buddy text. So what was great, especially for this project for me, and because I want to improve my skills in front end, is that a lot of my time was spent playing around with cursor and learning more about TypeScript and React. Was able to do a lot of the AI things in Langflow. It was really easy and fast to kind of iterate through the different steps here using Langflow and having all of these different tools and components at my disposal. Um, being able to build the agent pretty quickly, same with the vector database retrieval flow, and then spend more time in cursor, vibe coding the front end and making sure that all work properly as well. So now all together, what did we go through? We went over this fashion buddy prototype tool. We learned how to process images using a vision model, how to send that vision model's response to a vector database, and then how we can use those responses back for the users uh, as a personalized recommendation. We learned how to use an AI agent to accept a query and then use tools to search the internet and find the best response for that user's query, and then export those flows all from our Langflow um, IDE or playground, as you'd say, and then bring them into a tool like Cursor to then point to the back end and use it um, so that you can spend more time with the front end, handling all different other functionalities of your applications, aside from the AI part that you're building as well. And that is where the clothing recommendation app is right now. It encapsulates a lot of different AI tools, as I've mentioned in the beginning, but I hope you learned a thing or two as you were watching this video, maybe found some ideas of something that you might want to build, or maybe you were introduced to new tools that you want to try out yourself. Use Langflow to help with your AI development and learning. And as always, join us in the Discord to continue the conversation. Happy coding!